Hello, my name is Paul Miners and welcome to another one of my pipe drive training videos. In this video, I want to give you an introduction to the new campaigns feature inside pipe drive. This is going to be a really useful feature. In fact, it's been one of the most requested updates and features to be added to pipe drive by users. And what this feature is going to let you do is it's going to let you easily send newsletter and broadcast style emails to uh, large groups of of contacts or subscribers in your pipe drive database. So this is going to be really useful if you want to send, you know, weekly or monthly newsletters. This is a really useful way to keep leads warm and nurture them until that time that they're ready to become, you know, an actual buyer and move forward in your sales process. This is something I've worked with uh, with a number of one-on-one -on -one clients. A lot of people that have businesses and sales cycles that are, are quite long want to keep their leads warm and so this feature is going to be particularly useful. Using the new campaigns feature also means that you don't have to integrate Pipedrive with a third-party email provider. Up until now, you've had to use something like MailChimp or ActiveCampaign or ConvertKit like I do, and you had to connect Pipedrive with one of these third-party providers. Now, what I would say is that right now, the campaigns feature is still in beta, so Depending on the complexity of your email strategy, if you're wanting to do more complex email automation, then a third party tool like ConvertKit or ActiveCampaign may still be the better way to go. But for fairly simple newsletters and one time broadcast style emails, I would highly recommend checking out the new campaigns feature. It is going to be an optional add on to whatever subscription you currently have. To talk briefly about pricing, now this is susceptible to change because this feature is still in beta, but like I said, it's going to be an optional add-on and you can see some of the pricing tiers here. So Pipedrive is coming out with a tiered structure, so you really only pay for the number of subscribers that you have uh, in your account. Now, if you have any questions at the end of this video, please feel free to leave me a comment below. And if you do want one-on-one -on -one help with Pipedrive setting up, optimizing your account, or automating more of your sales process, then check out the link in the description below to learn more about my Pipedrive consulting and support options. So let's get into this video, and let me just start by talking you through some of the features in the new Campaigns tab that you'll find here on the left. You'll actually be walked through some of the setup when you uh, first launch the new campaigns tab. Because I've already set this up, I'll just draw your attention to some of the features here. So when you set up the campaigns add-on, uh, as a one-time setup, you do need to input some company information like your company name and address. Uh, you'll see here, this is needed for compliance um, purposes, uh, things like GDPR. So you just need to provide an address for your business. You also need to set up a sender. This is a person or an email address that is going to be used to send those broadcast or newsletter emails. So you'll set this up, you'll need to actually verify that address as well, but this is, this is just something you need to set up one time when you're getting started with this new feature. Now, once you've configured the basic settings, you can go along to templates and you can create templates, which are a useful way of quickly creating a nice branded email with your company's colors, logos, graphics, things like that. So you can either start from a blank template or you can use one of these uh, templates as a starting point. So here's an example of a template. You can see uh, this is sort of very user-friendly and easy to use. I can click on any of these sections or blocks or bits of text or media, and I can change some of the styling options around that. So I can change things like the background color here if I want to use a slightly different color, maybe a bit like that. I can click on things like this image. If I want to link this image to a URL like my website, uh, I can click on text here. I can change the text, change alignment, spacing, colors, things like that. And if I uh, click out and go back to this content area, I can drag in new elements like a new block of text maybe up here at the top. So maybe I'll just put in some dummy text there and I'll make that maybe white. I could also drag in things like maybe I want a button here, so I can click on that button. I can set what I want this button to do if I want to link it to my website, something like that. I can change colors, spacing. Uh, it's very sort of easy and intuitive in terms of getting the email to look and feel the way you want it to. So just including my company colors, my logos, my branding, uh, it's all pretty straightforward here. 
Now, before you actually create an email to send, you're going to have to subscribe some of your existing contacts and, and change their marketing status. So once you have the campaign's feature set up, you'll notice this new marketing status column in your contact information. So let's go to a contact. I'm just going to go to Warwick Palm here. And you'll see here is that marketing, this new marketing status box in the details panel. And I've set Warwick to be subscribed. I can change this whenever I like if I want to unsubscribe him or of course the user here can unsubscribe themselves if they receive an email they can click that unsubscribe link at the bottom of the email and that that they can choose to unsubscribe themselves but uh, when getting started I can update my existing contacts and choose who I want to be subscribed to receive my campaign emails just keep in mind uh, the obviously policies the privacy laws in your jurisdiction whatever country you're in um, some countries uh, and most email providers do require that you, uh, you actually receive consent before sending newsletter and marketing style emails to your subscribers so here I've got Warwick here subscribed so he's ready to go so now I'm ready to compose an email campaign. So I'm going to go to my campaigns tab. I'm on the email campaigns uh, option here, and I'm going to click plus campaign. I'm going to give it a date. Uh, this is just an internal date. Um, it's not put anywhere in, uh, sorry, a, a name I should say. This is not put anywhere in your email. It's just for internal use, the, the name of your campaign. So I'm going to send a letter tomorrow, uh, an email newsletter tomorrow. So let's do 24 um, pipe drive newsletter. Next I can choose my recipients. So if I click this drop down, it's actually going to show me the filters that I've already created in my contacts list. So if I just um, save this for a second and go to my contacts, you'll see here all these filters that I've already created for things like high value clients, um, important relationships, all those filters that I've already set up, they can be used to send my email campaigns. So I'm going to just for this example, send to this contractors filter and it's going to say I have one marketing contact selected because I've got Warwick who's a contractor he is eligible to receive this email because he's part of that filter and he is subscribed as well. Next I can choose the from information so when the email is received what do I want the contact to appear as so I'm just going to choose to make this my name but if you're sending an email newsletter on behalf of a company it's quite common practice to put your company name here instead I've got my sender email here. You can pick if you if you're using multiple addresses, like maybe you're using you know info at or support at different addresses. Um, you can set up multiple senders and choose which address you're sending from, and you can specify a reply to address. So even though I'm sending from Paul at PaulMiners.com, I could choose when people hit reply to have those replies direct to a separate email address if I want to. Now I can start to compose my newsletter. So what do I want the subject of my email to be? So I'm just going to say, uh, let's just say how to use the new campaigns feature in Pipedrive. So that's going to be the subject of my email. And then the preview text, you don't have to fill this in, but this is basically the little bit of text that appears in the email preview. So usually on your phone or in your email client, it's going to show you the subject and then a few sentences of what's inside that email. So you can customize this and say, you know, exciting new feature you must check out. And now I'm ready to start uh, composing my email and I've got a couple of options here. Either I can use one of my templates that I created previously. I can create an HTML email if I want complete control and customization over the look and feel. I could build it from scratch using the HTML editor. Or I could just start a new one using the drag and drop editor. Uh, I'm just going to choose the one of my templates and I've got a plain text email here. I quite like just simple plain text emails um, because they just sort of appear more natural and it's just kind of the style that I, I personally quite like. So I can um, you know compose my email here and you can see what I've done at the top is I've included a merge tag where I want someone's name to be inserted. So the email is still personalized with data that I have inside Pipedrive. So I could actually say, let's just remove that for a second. So how I insert this is over here. I have the merge tags option and it's going to show the data that I can dynamically insert into my email. 
So I could say I want to use the person's full name or maybe just their first or last name. So let's just put in um, Pi first name. And you could see down there, there were some other options as well. I could reference the company as well. So I could say something like, um, you know, hope everything at, and then I could put in their company, person organization is going well. So I could do that just to include, to make my email a little bit more personal and, um, you know, unique to the person that's receiving it. Using the um, drag and drop editor, I can drag in additional content like I showed you when composing a template. Uh, if I want to include maybe an image here, uh, let's put that there. I can include an image, I can include a button. Um, so I can completely kind of build my email from scratch on this page. Let's uh, remove those for now. You will notice down the bottom here, the pipe drive has included a footer with the default in information that needs to be included for sending an email broadcast. Things like the company name, address, there's an unsubscribe link in here as well. And so if you try to edit this, you can't, you can't edit it. This will just automatically fill in and populate with your actual information. So don't worry if that looks a bit funny right now, it's going to populate when the email is actually sent. A couple of other things you can do, um, you can save this email as a template. If you've designed an email that looks really nice, you like the look and the feel and the style, you could save that as a template for easily using again the next time. I think sending emails with a consistent brand is really important so that people come to recognize your emails and who's actually sending them. If you want, before you send, you can preview. Um, I mean, it looks, pretty much the same as what you saw on the previous screen, but you can see what it's gonna look like on different devices as well to check that the email looks good before you click send. So let's go ahead and save that content. Before I send my email, I can choose to send a test here as well. So I could put in my email, paul at paulminers.com, and I'm just gonna send a test to myself. And so this is just a nice step that I usually take uh, with when sending marketing emails to make sure that the actual email that gets received looks good in my email client and there's no um, obvious issues. It's also a good way of testing any links that you've included to make sure they work as well. Finally, down the bottom here, I can choose to track opens and clicks. If I want to track and, and see reports on how many opens, how many clicks does this email receive, I can uh, turn on that tracking if I want to. And then finally, once I'm ready to, uh, to send my email, I can go ahead and click send up here. It's gonna just ask me to confirm, so I'm gonna send that now. And there we go. I'm gonna go back to my campaigns. This is in the process of sending, but very soon I'll be able to start reporting on the number of clicks and opens that this newsletter has received. So here we go, you can see now my email has finished sending. It's been delivered to one person and uh, that person's opened it, so I've got a 100% open rate, which looks great. And so there we go, that is a look at the new campaigns feature inside Pipedrive. Now, depending on when you're looking at this video, right now, as, as of the time of recording, this feature is still in beta. Uh, and so it's you know very likely to change and be improved on in the coming months. If you're watching this video a, uh, you know, a couple of months or maybe even a couple of years from now, because I do leave my videos up for a while, um, it's likely that this feature has you know changed a little bit since then. But as I said, it's a nice, simple, easy way of sending a newsletter or broadcast broadcast style email to the subscribers and leads in your Pipedrive account. And if you don't want to be, you know, going through the hassle of syncing your Pipedrive contacts to a third party list and paying for two different tools, I do think this feature is really nice. But again, as I mentioned, it's gonna depend a little bit on your email strategy. If you want something a bit more advanced for sending, you know, automated email sequences and big kind of long follow-up campaigns, then you will still need something more sophisticated like ConvertKit or ActiveCampaign or MailChimp. If you have any questions about the new campaigns feature or need help with Pipedrive, please leave me a comment below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.